Hey guys, in this lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about calcium absorption and the role and importance of vitamin D in calcium absorption and why we actually need vitamin D to absorb calcium properly. So to begin, vitamin D is commonly absorbed from food or produced in the skin in the form of cholecalciferol or vitamin D3. Now this form of vitamin D is not the active form that we require to adequately absorb calcium. So what does it need to do? Well, when you first absorb cholecalciferol, it needs to undergo a couple of steps to be processed into the active form. So what it does is cholecalciferol actually travels to the liver and will become calcifidial. Calcifidial will then travel to the kidney where it is processed into calcitriol or the active form that we're actually interested in, the form that aids in calcium absorption. So this uh, brings up an important point guys, that in order for a person to produce calcitriol in adequate amounts, they actually need a healthy and functioning liver and a healthy and functioning kidney. So this is important when we think about patients with renal failure. And for calcium, calcium actually requires calcitriol for adequate absorption and utilization. So why is that? Well, when we look at uh, an enterocyte in the small intestine, um, on the left we can see the intestinal lumen. So say you've absorbed or ingested some calcium in your diet. Well, the, the process, the basic process of calcium absorption goes like this. Calcium is brought into the enterocyte through a calcium transporter. It binds to a protein in the, in the cytosol known as calbindin D. This allows the calcium to be transported through the enterocyte and to the opposite side of the enterocyte so that it can be pumped out of the enterocyte into the bloodstream um, via an ATP dependent calcium pump. So why is calcitriol so important in this process? Well, when you have calcitriol, it enters the enterocyte and it'll actually bind to a protein known as vitamin D receptor or calcitriol receptor. Now this receptor is actually a transcription factor and it'll actually bind to something else known as retinoid X receptor, but that's not important in this uh, scheme. So when it binds to vitamin D receptor, the calcitriol will enter the nucleus where it'll activate a genetic program. So what does this genetic program do? Well, the genetic program will actually increase the expression, uh, the translation, transcription, translation, and expression of calcium transporters.